I'm Maggie Miller, and my guest today is Sanjay Joshi. He is Tanium's first healthcare and life sciences chief information officer. So welcome, Sanjay. I kick off this interview by just telling us a little bit about yourself and your background in healthcare and technology. Uh, thank you, Maggie. Uh, thank you for your time today. Um, so I've been focused on healthcare, life sciences, biotechnology, and device systems for more than 25 years now. Um, I jokingly refer to myself as a recovering scientist with a broad perspective. Um, over the years, my goals for continuous learning um, have seen a lot of progress only because of great colleagues and teachers and mentors. Um, more recently, I've been interested in uh, systems and protocols um, and what happens to these information and data systems after protocols or algorithms or humans touch it. Um, very uh, quick, uh, interesting reference. I'll paraphrase Frank Zappa from his 1979 album, Joe's Garage Act Three. Um, and here's what he said in the lyrics. This was 1979, and this was before data became big. Um, the paraphrase is, data is not information. And the lyrics from the album uh, is, information is not knowledge. Knowledge is not wisdom. Wisdom is not truth. Truth is not beauty. Um, and beauty is not love. And love is not music. I think, um, you know, to wrap that up, uh, the larger question, I think, for us is, to get from data in the cybersecurity and trust realm um, into this orchestral music uh, at massively distributed scales and close to real time. So that's what interests me. Wow, well, you've confused me already, but it's very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so what attracted you to Tanium and specifically this role? Um, I would say, uh, as with anything else, um, three things. First and uh, most important, it's the people. Um, these are extremely experienced people that have been around the block a couple of times. Um, the second is the communications and data platform. I already mentioned the importance of data and communications and protocols. And third and finally, a, a global and focused approach to verticals. Um, and the reason for all of this is uh, I've been working on the trust, risk, and privacy areas in healthcare and life sciences specifically. Uh, to try and understand the context of the oh, 200 or so functions that run healthcare and life sciences operations. Um, and a quick backstory of again, why I'm here. Uh, 2015 was the worst year for healthcare breaches in the United States. Um, and since I was the recipient of a National Institutes of Health or NIH grant award in the past, uh, some of my information was compromised. It was called the OPM hack, Office of Personal Management in the US government. Uh, from then on, kind of understanding these network protocols, operating systems, applications, and their fingerprints, uh, as well as uh, the motivation for you know, why people hack and compromise system has been my passion and hobby for more than five years. And it's, you know, what do they say? It's wonderful to move this passion and hobby into a, hobby into a career, I think. What are some of the challenges you've seen in the healthcare industry, particularly when it comes to security? I'll focus on the same three things again. Um, I've mentioned these in uh, snippets in the past, trust, risk, and privacy. Um, in medical school, the trust paradigm is, goes something like this uh, when, when you're with patients. Um, say what you're gonna do, do what you said you were gonna do, and say or report the difference between what you said and what you did. I think trust is that taken to the societal context. Um, I'll wrap risk in, again, from medicine perspective. Uh, in medicine, they tell you first do no harm. And to me, tr to me risk is measuring this likelihood of uh, adverse events and adverse effects to society and trying to quantify them with uh, some confidence is risk modeling. Uh, privacy is very simple. Privacy is the right to be left alone. So if you kind of bundle all these three things, I think that um, the challenge really is the data and the metadata to build these trust, risk, and privacy models at scale and in real time. Um, those, I think, are the real big challenges for healthcare in the future. And how do you think Tanium can help solve those challenges? 
I'm a biology guy. I studied a little bit of biology. I think uh, just like RNA and lipids, uh, lipids are fatty acids. Uh, RNA, we're kind of knowing about, all about mRNA, thanks to the vaccine. Um, so RNA lipids are kind of the basic building blocks of human cellular biology. I think the basic issue in, in, um, in, in cybersecurity is, uh, again, data, trust, and, trust and risk. Um, um, I studied engineering before I wandered into biology and um, uh, in the instrumentation class, uh, my professor said, hey, Lord Kelvin used to say famously that if we cannot measure it, uh, we cannot improve it. So, um, so in clinical trials, for example, uh, the term endpoint is, is defined as an event or an outcome uh, that can be measured objectively um, and, and determine whether the intervention that you uh, mitigate uh, is being beneficial to who you're mitigating it to. So if you combine this clinical study or clinical trial endpoint with a computer systems endpoint at massive distributed scales and across time axis, I believe we have defined the real issue uh, where I think uh, Tanium would really benefit. Um, the pandemic and remote work left many doors ajar increased vulnerability. I think after 2015, 2020 has this been the second worst year for healthcare and life sciences, uh, cybersecurity and breaches. Um, so as we kind of move into this data era with specific governance and regulatory compliance requirements, um, I think a platform and a management control plane approach uh, by Tanium would be the central theme in my opinion. Great. Well, it sounds like there's a lot of work to do in the healthcare space. So we're glad you're here. Thank you for sharing your insights and welcome again to Tanium.